You make comments that the GOP is okay with creating chaos, that they actually uh, are, don't necessarily want the economy to shape up because they can use it to defeat the president in 2012. Do you really think that's what's going on with your colleagues? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, these are the clowns who blessed uh, triple, uh, blessed uh, subprime junk as AAA securities, and they did it corruptly. They did it because they were being paid by the issuers to advise them on how to turn this dross into gold. So uh, they're the last people in the world who ought to have credibility uh, about uh, anything. This is the reality of the crisis in the U.S. economy. People who used to own their own homes are living hand to mouth on land once occupied by those less fortunate. Mr. McGuire, formerly of Goldman Sachs, is a metal trader in London. He has been told firsthand by traders working for J.P. Morgan Chase that J.P.M. manipulates the precious metals markets and they brag how they make money doing so. Welcome back. Today, authorities finally going after shady gold dealers like Goldline International, the company made famous by Glenn Beck. Congress, along with California prosecutors, now launching separate probes into accusations. Goldline overcharges for coins and misleads investors. Other critics add Goldline salespeople aren't even qualified financial advisors and that the company stokes public fears so it can mark up its gold and profit. As we first reported in May, Goldline commercials for overpriced coins are woven into broadcasts by Beck and other conservative TV and radio hosts. This is a top-notch uh, organization that's been in business since 1960. It's the right thing for you and your family. You want some insurance? Trust the people at Goldline. As a reminder, the average markup at Glenn Beck's Gold Line is 90% above its actual value, 47% higher than competitors on average, with the biggest markup.
Uh, in actuality, it was anything but a bank. It was essentially a Nazi money laundering operation that had a lot of tentacles into a lot of different other businesses. And he did all that he could to proselytize for Hitler and the rise of his third wife. Incredibly, after being warned by the FBI and the Justice Department and the Treasury Department to cease and desist in their Nazi dealings, they had continued them until 1951. There had been 28 additional seizures of Nazi assets and Nazi business fronts between late 1942 and 1951, and that they had moved Nazi assets into Switzerland, Brazil, Argentina, and Panama. The exposure of the beginnings of a national security state, which believes it has the right to override the Constitution. These are modern-day pirates, these guys. They have escaped essentially the control of national governments. Sometimes they move under color of, uh, you know, and defend themselves as advancing U.S. national interests. In this. But I, uh, I think that is very secondary with these guys. By the 1936 campaign, the battle lines were drawn. Roosevelt had created a voter coalition that would shape the Democratic Party for the next 40 years. But as Roosevelt sought re-election, its strength would be tested for the first time, leading the opposition, the Republican candidate for president. Alfred Boston Landon of Kansas. Poor Alf Landon was no match for FDR. I do not believe that a temporary depression is adequate reason for changing our whole form of government. Landon and the Republicans were so serious, and FDR just loved to make fun of them. Let me warn you, and let me warn the nation against the smooth evasion that says, of course we believe these things. We believe in social security. We believe in work for the unemployed. We believe in saving homes. Cross our hearts and hope to die. We believe in all these things. But we do not like the way the present administration is doing them. Just turn them over to us. We will do all of them. We will do more of them. We will do them better. And most important of all, the doing of them will not cost anybody anything. FDR's re-election was the biggest landslide in American history. Landon won only Maine and Vermont. It's Roosevelt again. Dorothy Thompson, the columnist, snickered that if Landon had given one more speech, Roosevelt would have carried Canada too. The victory solidified the New Deal and gave hope to millions of Americans, still victims of the depression that wouldn't go away. <laughs>